Hello and welcome. I am Exolite and this is my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a very strange disappearance and death of a young man whose name is Lucas Renaud. Before I get started, if you would please remember to, if you want to, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to be seen. Also, if you are not subscribed and you would like to be, please go ahead and do so. And if you do, if you click that bell, you'll be notified every time my content goes up. And something new. I've been given a thank you button. It's right below your screen. And if you click on that, you can leave a monetary tip if you would like. Of course, as always, it is not a must do. I love doing these videos and we'll keep doing the videos. It's just something to keep in mind in case you ever want to. All right, so let's get started with this. On June 26th, 2019, hikers discovered a badly decomposed body 100 feet from a trail near the Harrison Waterfalls. The series of waterfalls is close to Lons La Sonniere, in the mountains of the Jura region of France, near the border of Switzerland. After DNA testing, the body turned out to be that of 21-year-old Lucas Renaud. Lucas had vanished in that exact same area just eight days earlier on Tuesday, June 18th, during a short hike with his friends and colleagues. He had walked ahead of the group on a popular, well-signed posted trail, out of sight of the others, and then was never seen alive again. What happened to Lucas Renaud has puzzled investigators and the families remain convinced that there has been an official cover-up after the case was abruptly closed in November of 2019. The autopsy was inconclusive with no trauma or drugs detected, and the cause of death was put down to natural causes. So what is and where are the Harrison waterfalls? The series of 31 waterfalls called La Cascades de Harrison is a spectacular tourist attraction in the Jura Mountains on the French-Swiss border. It is located between Dossier and Bonlieu in the lakes region of the Harrison Valley. A really popular hike is to start from La Maison de Cascades with a 4.6 mile round trip that takes about three hours to hike. Close to the start of the trail are two of the largest Harrison waterfalls, La Ventail and La Grande Sotte. The Maison de Cascades, situated near the Ventail waterfall, is a museum dedicated to this natural site and especially to its history its fauna, its geology, and its legends. On June 18th, 2019, at the end of the afternoon after work, Lucas went for a walk with his colleagues, trainees like him, from the animal park called Polar Park at Chaux Neuve. He was being trained to look after sick animals. The plan was to explore the Harrison waterfalls by following the 2.3 mile trail by the river, which is a very popular and considered a very safe tourist site. Lucas called his mother to wish her a happy birthday at around 5.30 p.m. Then, on the way back to the parking area, he walked ahead of the rest of the group alone, leaving them behind as he disappeared out of view never to be seen again. Moments before, a picture of him holding his colleague's dog walking down some steps had been taken and everything seemed fine. There had been no argument among him and the rest of the group. There was no panicked phone call. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, yet he was never seen alive again. Upon arriving back at the parking lot, that is when the group noticed that Lucas was nowhere to be seen. After searching the area around the trail thoroughly and backtracking to the part of the river where they had last seen Lucas, 
His colleagues reported him missing to the authorities. The river itself was not swollen by water during this time of the year, and it was relatively benign, meaning the current was really very slow. It would be unlikely that you would be able to drown in it. This happened in the summer, August. If it had happened in the winter, then that's a different story. The Heavy rainfall in the Jura Mountains can make parts of this trail impassable, with the level of the river rising and becoming a, a torrent. But that was not the case. This time of year, it was very low, very slow. The gendarmes, which is a military force in France with law enforcement duties among the civilian population, with dogs, were then deployed. A helicopter equipped with a thermal camera was sent up and about 90 men, including mountain rescue specialists and several dog teams, scoured the area. Even though Lucas had a cell phone, they were unable to detect where it had been. It was if it was turned off. Either that or the cell phone reception, wherever he was, was too poor to triangulate using cell phone towers. Then, out of the blue... On the evening of his disappearance, at around 10.20 p.m., Lucas dialed 112, which is the European emergency number equivalent to 911, on his cell phone, and he had an eight-minute call to say that he was lost in the forest, that he was tired, and he was frightened. He said he could not find his way back and that his legs hurt. Then the conversation was abruptly cut off. Lucas's father, Dominique Renaud, is later quoted as saying, The gendarmes made me listen to it so that I could identify my son's voice. I was upset. I did not have the force to listen to everything. In the recording, the person speaking to Lucas does not give him advice. He does not ask the right questions. Instead of telling him not to move, he asks him to try to find a path and then it cut. When the official search ended after three or four days, the family continued the search for Lucas and combed the area with a drone with volunteers helping the operation. But Lucas could not be located. Then, finally, on Wednesday, June 26th, just 100 yards from the trail and one-third mile from the parking lot, Lucas's body was found by a walker. The remains were so badly decomposed because of the summer heat and the animal activity on the corpse. Please keep in mind that this is a well-signed trail. Easy. Considered very easy to walk. Very easy to follow. Lucas's father and his partner Magali Berger are still seeking the truth about the death of their son. They asked after the investigation how he could have died just one-third of a mile from the parking lot at a popular tourist site and not had cell phone reception when they were trying to peg it off of a tower. Then an upset Dominique was quoted as saying, the gendarmes initially just believed that he was a runaway. And then I think that if Lucas had been a minor, the searches would have been longer and better organized. A dog association had offered to help us. The gendarmes refused it. I don't understand. We should have put all our forces together to find him. We might have been able to save him. Magali is quoted as saying, How is Lucas dead? What? My son was in good health. Did he see himself die? Did he suffer? Was he afraid? Why does the Lons La Sagne district attorney not want to tell us? The silence is torture. We just know that Lucas was not beaten by a third party. In short, that he was not killed. But his death remains a mystery, and we have lived with it ever since. Mourning was made all the more difficult for Lucas's parents 
as they were unable to see their son before he was buried as his body was badly decomposed during the week in the forest. Magali was quoted as saying, On June 18th, before his hike, my son called me to wish me a happy birthday. We were supposed to celebrate as a family when he returned. It's so brutal. We never saw our son again. Just a coffin. After several days spent in the forest, Lucas's body was too decomposed for the autopsy to shed light on the circumstances of the death or even its causes, according to Lionel Pascal, the prosecutor of Lons La Sagne, in a report issued on November of 2019. Although the examiner did note that there was an absence of traumatic injury and a toxic cause of death, meaning that there were no signs that he had been beaten or fallen and cracked his head and that he did not have drugs in his system. But he was nevertheless able to exclude the intervention of a third party in the death. So apparently no trauma caused the death, yet foul play was quickly dismissed and he was thought of as just a runaway. And the reason for that is not clear. A toxicological assessment detected that there was a presence of drug molecules that corresponded to a treatment that had been prescribed for Lucas, but that it was well within the limits of a therapeutic dose. Therefore, there were no illegal drugs and drug intoxication was not responsible for the death. The report concluded the autopsy did not make it possible to determine the cause of death. Since the cause of death could not be determined, Lionel Pascal said to the frustration of friends and family that it was to, quote, be considered as natural. Pascal ordered the investigation to be closed without further action on November 19, 2019. That was an outcome in which the lawyer of the parents and the family of Lucas, me Elsa Ganasia, is quoted as saying she did not expect at all. She goes on to say, with all the current scientific investigation techniques, I do not understand why we cannot determine what could have killed someone? But in the end, we may never know who or what killed Lucas. His parents filed a complaint against the local police and gendarmes for failure to assist someone who was in danger to ensure that everything had been done to find their son alive. Thank you for coming to my channel, and good night.